This video is about pushing your Kubernetes application a step forward. Hello everybody, my name is Karim and I hope you are doing well. In this video, we'll be learning about Helm. So we're gonna have some practical examples so we can understand how to use this tool and add it to our Kubernetes application. Before going any further, what the hell is Helm? Helm is an open source and an official Kubernetes project. Helm have three roles. First one is a package manager, templating engine, and the release manager. But why do we need Helm? Or when there is an advantage or even a need to use this tool and add it to our Kubernetes application? To answer this question and thus make it clear for you, let's take an example about one of the most used Helm scenarios. A simple example, nothing special, nothing complicated. We're having a website that runs in a Kubernetes cluster. This website is using a set of Kubernetes objects like pod, deployment, volume, services, etc. All of those objects are defined using Kubernetes YAML files. Deploying and configuring your application once is all good, no problem about that. But what if your application is meant to be deployed again and again on different environment, from dev to test to staging to integration to production maybe? This means that you need to copy past and even edit those Kubernetes YAML files for every environment you are willing to deploy your application to it. And Helm pop ups here for the rescue. Helm is using shards. A shard is a bundle. It's a sort of a package version of your Kubernetes application with all of its YAML files. So a shard will help you to define, create, to install and version, to upgrade and roll back and even to share your application. All of this using one and only one command. Okay, so let's kick things off and go straight forward to our command line. We're gonna start by installing Helm. And for this, we can use Brew if you are using macOS or Chocolate if you are using Windows. Helm successfully installed. Now let's jump and create our first chart. With this command, we're gonna create a chart named my website chart. The chart we just created is nothing but a set of directories and files following some specific structure that we're gonna take a look at. Using the tree command, we can see that the structure is composed of three directories and 10 files. First file, shard.yaml, which holds general information about our shard, like the name, the description, the version, etc. Second file is values.yaml. This one is a set of variables that will be replacing placeholders within the YAML files under the templates directory. Shard, which is a folder for shard dependencies. So for example, if our website is using Jenkins and Kibana, we'll be having two shards inside this directory. And last but not least, templates. This directory is holding all our Kubernetes YAML files from pods to ingress. So as we said before, those Kubernetes YAML files are using templates that will be replaced and filled with values coming from the values.yaml file and also from the function defined under the helpers file. We're gonna take a look in what's inside this chart structure so you can get the gist of it. Let's now open the chart.yaml file and let's edit the description of our shard. Let's go back and this time let's open the values.yaml file. We are having here a multitude of variables to be passed into the shard templates. Variables to configure Kubernetes objects as pod, deployment, service, etc. Like here the number of replicas, uh, the image pool policy, and as we can see service configuration to set the port and the type. Okay, let's go back to our command line so we can check the service.yaml file under the templates directory. All right, as you can see, a lot of placeholders here. We're gonna look into the one starting with that values first. And as you can notice, we're having two of them, values that service that type and that values that service that port. Those placeholders should be defined within the values.yaml file as showed here on the right of the screen. It's easy, the values refers to the file name, the rest is to indicate where the values is stored exactly. Nothing complicated, just YAML syntax. Choose Helm and package our website. We need to go back to the templates directory. We're gonna remove everything in here, but the helpers file. Then we're gonna go and open again the values.yml file. We're gonna clean it by removing all the variables that were defined inside. Next step is to add my deployment website YAML file within the templates directory. At first, we are having no placeholder within this deployment YAML file. It is a simple definition using an image of a Spring Boot application called Lucky App that you can find on my public Docker Hub repository. Let's add some placeholders to our deployment. 
We're gonna first use two functions from the helpers file that define the shard name and the shard full name. So we're gonna add a placeholder inside of the deployment name using the first function. Then for almost all the occurrences of the lucky app word, we're gonna use the second function. For the container name, we'll define a placeholder that refers to a value within the shard definition YAML file. And for the container image, we'll be using a value within our values.yml file. We're gonna open again the values file. And if you still remember, we've cleared just before all its content. Before going any further, let's add a new placeholder to set dynamically the replica account of our pod. So now let's define the variables to set our deployments placeholders. We're gonna set the image that repository to Karim Swabni slash lucky app and we're gonna set replica account to one. Let's open again the templates directory and add into it our website application service YAML file. Nothing complicated, a simple Kubernetes service of type load balancer. One more time, same as the editing we've done to our deployment file, let's add some placeholders to this service YAML file. We need to make changes to get exactly the file we see here on the right of the screen. As you can see, we are using the same function as the one used within the deployment to replace the lucky app word. For the values bar, we're going to add those into the values YAML file. So we're gonna open this file again, and we're gonna add a new service section to define the port, the target port, and the service type. To make sure there was no typing error within the process and to verify that the shard is well formed, let's run helm lint command. And yes, thankfully, our shard files are clean from any issue. Another useful Helm command is Helm template. Let's run this one and redirect the result to a test YAML file. So this command preview the final result generated by the Helm template engine, and which is meant to be executed on the Kubernetes cluster. And here we can see that all the placeholders within the service and deployment file have been replaced correctly and that using the values from the values file and the helper function file. Going back to our command line interface, we're gonna start Minikube, then open its dashboard. And as shown, we got nothing running on our Kubernetes cluster. Let's type helm install with the name of our shard. Executing this command will send a request to the Kubernetes cluster in order to create objects from the shard generated YAML files. Back to the dashboard, and this time we can see that we have our application deployed on our Kubernetes cluster with all its components. We have the deployment, the pod, the replica set, and the service. As long as we are using Minikube and not a real Kubernetes environment, we need to run the Minikube tunnel command so that we can access our deployed application from the browser. Using the service cluster IP, nice and easy, or accessing our application, which is running just perfectly. To get information about the shard we just deployed, we use helm list command. Here we have the shard name, the update date and time, the status, and the app version. Now let's access our shard directory and open the shard.yml file. I'm gonna edit the app version to 1.16.1, the version to 0.1.1, and let's also edit the name to my lucky app. Save and close, and then let's edit our values.yml file as well. We're gonna change the replica count to five, save the file, close it, and let's go back to our command line interface. Now to upgrade our application and thus change its configuration in the Kubernetes cluster, we need to execute helm upgrade with the name of our shard. And that's it, our app is upgraded. The status as shown here is deployed. So let's run again helmless to check what we've got here. The revision now is set to 2, the short name was updated to lucky app, and the app version was also updated to 1.16.1. So now back to our Kubernetes dashboard to verify if the changes on the replica count has been taken into account. And as shown here, we got now 5 replicas running on our Kubernetes cluster. Another useful helm command is helm rollback. So with this one, we're gonna roll back all the changes we've done just before. So we're gonna bring back the previous configuration and thus setting back the number of replicas to one. So now that we've seen some neat feature about Helm, like how to configure, how to package, how to update or even roll back your application on a Kubernetes cluster, it's time when things get interesting. We're gonna talk about a feature that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, which is sharing your shard. You can share your shard by deploying it to a public or a private server, exactly the same when you are pushing your code to a GitHub repository. 
Let's take a look at the central search location for Helmshard. This is an official website called Artifact Hub where anyone can deploy publicly their shards and search for useful ones. For instance, let's search for Jenkins. As you may know, Jenkins is a complex application that relies on several components and to install it manually on a Kubernetes cluster it will be a very challenging task. This is an official Jenkins shard. And here under template, there are a lot of resources that we can parameter easily from the values YAML file. So let's take a look at that one. As you can notice, there are already default values. And for the sake of simplicity here, we're not gonna make any change. We'll keep everything as it is. To install Jenkins into our Kubernetes cluster, there are two commands that we need to copy past. The first one is to add the repo. The second one is to install the shard. So let's do this. We're gonna execute the first command, then install the shard, executing the second one. So as you can see, status deployed, revision one, and we have a note with some information that show us how to access the Jenkins server on our localhost. Let's verify that by opening our Kubernetes dashboard. And here we can see that we have some new resources being deployed to our Kubernetes cluster. Two commands. This is exactly what you need to install a complex application like Jenkins into your Kubernetes cluster. So guys, this is all I have for today. I hope that this video helped you to understand what is Helm and how to use it with your Kubernetes application. Anyway, if you have any question or any recommendation, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Ici c'est Paris and thank you for watching.